In a historic move, the leaders of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Kuwait convened in Doha, determined to draw a firm line. No foreign troops will launch attacks against Iran from our soil, they declared in unison. This unified stance sent a clear message. The Gulf nations would not be pawns in a regional power struggle, but rather guardians of stability, unwilling to be the kindling for a wider conflagration. The Gulf states, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, Oman, and Bahrain, have long been aware of the devastating consequences of being drawn into external conflicts. The Middle East has historically been a geopolitical playground for global powers seeking control over resources, influence, and strategic footholds. From colonial interventions to Cold War-era proxy wars, the region has borne witness to foreign manipulation, often leaving local populations to pick up the pieces. These experiences have profoundly shaped the Gulf nation's current desire for neutrality. For these countries, neutrality is not just a diplomatic choice. It is a survival mechanism deeply rooted in the lessons of history. One of the primary reasons behind their decision to remain neutral is to prevent their lands from becoming battlegrounds for foreign wars. The scars left by previous conflicts, especially the Gulf Wars, serve as a stark reminder to Gulf leaders of the costs of being involved in large-scale conflicts. Gulf leaders have learned that allowing foreign powers to use their lands for military operations against regional neighbors can have devastating long-term consequences. This time, they are drawing a line in the sand. No foreign troops will launch attacks against Iran from Gulf soil. Diplomatic channels have been utilized extensively to assure Iran that the Gulf states are not interested in facilitating attacks against their country. While these countries host U.S. military bases, including the strategic al Udaid Air Base in Qatar and the U.S. Fifth Fleet in Bahrain, Gulf leaders have made it clear that these bases are not to be used as staging grounds for offensive actions against Iran. On the one hand, these nations must maintain their security relationships with the West, particularly the U.S., which provides crucial defense support on the other hand, they must reassure Iran that they are not complicit in any aggression against them. From Iran's perspective, these assurances matter greatly. Iran has a long history of perceiving foreign military bases as potential threats, particularly when those bases are located near its borders. The presence of U.S. forces in Iraq, Afghanistan, and the Gulf has long been a point of contention for Iranian leaders. Iran knows that foreign military bases in neighboring countries often serve as jumping off points for regional operations. For this reason, Gulf neutrality offers Iran a measure of reassurance, at least for now, that it will not be encircled by hostile forces ready to strike. The second reason for Gulf neutrality lies in the region's recognition of the broader consequences of the Iran-Israel conflict. Gulf leaders understand that the stakes extend far beyond the immediate parties involved, they recognize the gravity of the situation and how easily this regional conflict could spiral into a global catastrophe. The Middle East has long been a tinderbox, with every small conflict carrying the risk of igniting a much larger fire. The involvement of global powers, whether through arms sales, military alliances, or political influence, often turns these localized conflicts into international crises. Gulf nations are keenly aware that aligning too closely with one side could push the conflict beyond regional borders, potentially triggering a new world war. In the Gulf's view, allowing the conflict to escalate on their soil would be disastrous not only for the region, but for the entire world. The idea that a regional conflict could ignite a global one is not far-fetched. History has shown that small wars can expand into much larger confrontations when global powers are involved. Gulf leaders are not naive. They see the potential for a wider conflict involving the United States, Russia, China, and other global actors who have vested interests in the Middle East. By maintaining neutrality, the Gulf nations hope to prevent this conflict from drawing in additional international powers and spiraling out of control. This approach to neutrality also serves a greater purpose, regional unity. The Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC nations, have made significant efforts in recent years to foster unity among Arab states. They recognize that division within the Arab world only weakens their collective bargaining power on the global stage. 
the Iran-Israel conflict presents a real danger of further fracturing Arab unity. By maintaining neutrality, the Gulf states seek to ensure that this conflict does not become a wedge driving apart Arab nations, which could weaken the region and make it more vulnerable to external manipulation. Finally, the Gulf states' neutrality is driven by one of their most pressing concerns, economic stability. Their economies are deeply intertwined with global oil markets, and their wealth is largely tied to their ability to export oil. Any disruption to Gulf oil production could spell disaster for their economies. Gulf nations have spent decades building up their oil industries, which have become their primary source of income and a crucial part of their national identities. The prospect of oil fields becoming battlegrounds in the Iran-Israel conflict is a nightmare scenario for Gulf leaders. They are acutely aware of the risks involved in getting caught in the crossfire between Iran and Israel, both of which have the military capability to target oil facilities if the conflict escalates. The 2019 attack on Saudi Arabia's Abqaiq oil processing facility, allegedly carried out by Iran or its proxies, serves as a chilling reminder of how vulnerable the Gulf's oil infrastructure is. That attack temporarily disrupted 5% of the global oil supply, sending shockwaves through energy markets and highlighting the Gulf's exposure to regional conflicts. Given these risks, Gulf states have every reason to stay neutral. By doing so, they hope to protect their economic interests and ensure that their oil fields remain untouched. The Gulf states have consistently positioned themselves as mediators in regional disputes, often hosting peace talks and acting as intermediaries between conflicting parties. This track record of diplomatic engagement has become the cornerstone of their strategy to avoid being drawn into the maelstrom of the Iran-Israel conflict. But they understand that their economic and geopolitical survival hinges on their ability to navigate this delicate balancing act. The Gulf nations have witnessed firsthand the devastating consequences of being caught in the crosshairs of larger power struggles. Through their diplomatic initiatives, the Gulf states aim to keep the lines of communication open with all stakeholders. This strategy serves a dual purpose. It not only de-escalates tensions, but also preserves their position as neutral interlocutors, trusted by both Iran and Israel. By playing the role of honest broker, the GCC nations hope to prevent the Iran-Israel conflict from spiraling out of control and drawing in additional global powers, which could ultimately lead to a wider conflagration. They recognize that the stakes go far beyond the immediate parties involved. The potential for a regional dispute to ignite a global crisis is ever-present. Through extensive diplomatic channels, they have repeatedly assured Iran that their territories will not be used as staging grounds for attacks against the Islamic Republic. This delicate balancing act, however, is fraught with challenges. It is a tightrope walk that requires exceptional diplomatic skill and unwavering resolve. The Gulf states' survival, both economic and geopolitical, hinges on their ability to successfully execute this diplomacy-driven strategy. They recognize that any misstep, any perceived alignment with one side, could have devastating consequences, potentially triggering retaliatory strikes on their vital oil infrastructure or even drawing them into the larger conflict. As the Iran-Israel tensions continue to simmer, the Gulf nations stand as guardians of regional stability, wielding diplomacy as their primary deterrent. Their success or failure in this endeavor could reverberate far beyond the Middle East, shaping the geopolitical landscape for decades to come. Iran, for example, has already hinted that it could target the oil infrastructure of nations that it perceives as supporting Israel or the West. As the tensions between Iran and Israel continue to escalate, the Gulf states find themselves navigating a complex geopolitical landscape. While the threat of direct conflict is ever-present, these nations face an equally daunting challenge, the long-term consequences of their reliance on oil. The global shift towards renewable energy has put significant pressure on oil-producing countries like those in the Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, to diversify their economies. Saudi Arabia's ambitious Vision 2030 plan is a prime example of this, with the kingdom seeking to reduce its dependence on oil by investing in sectors such as tourism, entertainment, and technology. However, this transition is a monumental task, and in the meantime, the Gulf states remain heavily dependent on oil revenues. 
This dependency poses a significant risk, as the economic consequences of any disruption to their oil infrastructure could be severe, not just for the Gulf nations themselves, but for the global economy as a whole. The specter of the Iran-Israel conflict looms large over this challenge. If the neutrality the Gulf states have so carefully cultivated were to falter and their oil facilities were to become targets in the regional power struggle, the repercussions could be catastrophic. But lessons of history have not been lost on the Gulf leaders. They have witnessed firsthand the devastating consequences of being drawn into external conflicts, with the scars of past wars still fresh in their memory. By maintaining a delicate balance, they hope to insulate their oil infrastructure from the fallout of the Iran-Israel conflict, while also safeguarding their long-term economic diversification efforts. The stakes are high, and the path forward is far from clear. The Gulf states must continue to exercise caution, employ strategic diplomacy, and focus on strengthening their economic resilience. Failure to do so could not only jeopardize their own futures, but also have far-reaching implications for the global economy and the delicate balance of power in the Middle East. The caught between the competing interests of Iran and Israel, as well as the broader geopolitical machinations of global powers, these countries must navigate a treacherous path to ensure their survival and prosperity. While neutrality may be their best option, it is far from a guarantee of safety in a region teetering on the edge of war. As the world watches this high-stakes game of diplomacy and military posturing, the question remains, can the Gulf states truly maintain their neutrality, or will they be forced to choose sides, with potentially devastating consequences for the region and the global economy? The fate of the Middle East, and perhaps the world, may very well hang in the balance. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.